Hey guys, welcome to today's Wealth Wad. Um, I want to talk today about investment mistakes. Al can give you a rundown of a, a mistake we came across when we were going through a tender process uh, recently on a land acquisition. I don't know if you want to give me a rundown of what happened here. So this one here, pretty close to our office actually, so it's been on the market, an old school site. Uh, the state government was selling it, price expectations around the $25 million mark. And it wasn't an auction, but it was an expressive interest, which means basically everyone puts their bids in by a set date, closed envelope type situation. Uh, and if someone really wants it, someone pays more. So in this case, someone paid 48 million. They wanted so, 25, they paid oh, just under 48 million. There was about four or five uh, expressions of interest at 25 mil, someone paid 48 mil. A mistake. That's a mistake. Yeah, that's, that's, a mistake. that's a big mistake. So we thought we'd talk to today about other typical investment mistakes. So standard investment mistakes. So I've got a few I want to read out to you. Um, Buying property close to home, um, so you can drive past it. Um, there's only probably, I, I peg it down to one or two percent of the market makes a good investment at any point in time, and that changes depending on the market cycles. So what's to say that one or two percent of good investment properties happens to be right next to your location? That's one or two percent all of Australia. Yeah. Mm, not much chance it's in your street. Yeah. So a bit more investigation um, and not getting too emotional about the fact that you need to drive past it. Flissy and even Beth's really good example. Um, Plus, he's got houses she hasn't even looked at. She doesn't really care, to be honest, but, but they generate income for the family. Um, so don't get emotional. Investing's all their numbers. Well. What's that? <laughs> so, so does Ken. Yeah, I know. <laughs> he's got yeah. something he hasn't seen so far. True. Um, self managing tenants. Property's supposed to be about fun. Property's supposed to be about it, in, enjoying the journey. And believe me, tenants. Not fun. Remember the what we did the other week, guys, about um, how the, the toilet ruined someone's investment career because they were petrified of getting a phone call that the toilet was blocked? Danny, yeah. Yeah, Danny. Well, guess what? <laughs> if you're self-managing your properties, they're the calls you'll be getting. You don't want them. Yeah. Um, one of the big ones, while expressions of interest, we've got to go in these ones. We can't, um, there's no way to purchase a property otherwise. Um, one of the biggest mistakes investors make is buying at auction. Why? I've been asked this a number of times recently. Why is buying at auction a mistake? Because paying more than everyone else is not a good investment strategy. So, once again, buy properties where you don't have to go in and bid openly against everyone else. It's your own home, guys. Very different investment and own homes are different things. Yeah. Um, Al and I have bought lots of old properties. So buying old properties with no um, no way to add real value to it. So we've bought a lot of properties in the past, which are our own um, our older properties, and and tarted them up in the market rise. But reality is when I'm uh, when I match the amount of renovation costs against the you know, stamp duty and all that sort of things against um, buying a new property, um, for the last four or five years at least, I've only purchased new properties. There's a little thing Cam was doing a while ago called the McClellan Reno. Uh, right. It wasn't pretty, but it literally rolled through a Reno and a joint for about, I'll say 500 bucks, but in reality it's a bit more than that. Yeah, it's about, about 5k. This was back before Bunnings even, so I think it was McEwen's were doing uh, the flat pack, ki flat pack kitchen. So for about five grand, I get a kitchen, a few kitchen cupboards. Do some lino and tenant worthy carpet. I think he's weaving his own carpet, guys. That's how basic they were. <laughs> it was like Hessian bags stitched <laughs> together. Um, it was uh, spotlight for curtains. I put tan bark around it and I'd paint the inside of it. Um, Felicity, I think, painted about eight houses before she she gave up uh, painting forever and said not she didn't even look at a paintbrush anymore. But there's one thing straight away, guys, an older property that takes it away as a good investment, and that's like a depreciation straight away. Very good. The government's paying some of your repayments and some of your property holding costs through depreciation benefits, and old property doesn't have it. Yeah, true, true. Um, buying based on the look and feel of a place, once again, that comes down to emotion. Um, asking an agent for advice. Yeah, okay, that goes. Yeah, I'm sure he wants to sell you something, so he's got the best property you've ever seen. Yeah. Just ask him. Yeah, agents have got set strategies for the way they show you certain properties. They usually only show three, with the middle one being the one they want to sell you. One that's terrible, one that's way overpriced, the one in the middle, they'll pitch you on. So, the basic strategy. And it's usually the one where the listing's coming to the end. So, you know how that works, Al? What's that one? When a listing's getting close to the end. Yeah. Um, and and if, if, if they sign Al's property up three months ago and they give him, not, and he's on a 90 day to sell the property and they sign mine up today, who's property they're going to try and push first? Obviously the one that's getting close to the end. lose the listing on. Yeah. Um, there are agents out there that are good, so I'm not kicking the, you know, yeah, all of them. Overcapitalizing. Um, when you're an investor, overcapitalizing is a big mistake. It's a bad haircut. Selling to realize profit. Um, this is one, I've made this mistake in the past, and I know you have, mate. Um, yeah, when you should instead create a redraw facility and utilize the equity there. Yeah. Because the reality is you usually just go and buy another property anyway. Um, 
paying off debt once again should create a redraw facility instead um, selling property to transfer into self-managed super funds to purchase property anyway uh, no finance clause entered into in the contract I think every Huge property job. yeah every property we purchase we put a finance clause just gives you a bit of breathing space while you just firm up your feasibility or do your due diligence on it um, failing to get an expert to review the contract unless you've looked at I don't know, 50 contracts yourself and read through them and know the different sales acts in the different states. Um, get someone that you trust to look over the contract or explain it to you. Yeah, we talked about conveyances the other week, guys. Really good point. So we used to have Bruna who looked after us and now Christine, but we always make sure they're reviewing all the contracts to make sure that everything's just watertight and not in the other person's favour, I guess. Yeah. Um, as an investor, buying in a regional or rural area is a very big mistake. And, and rural, I include um, you know, areas like, so I'm thinking, northern Queensland, you know, Cairns, Townsville, those sort of things, Victoria, your Geelongs, those sort of areas. The reason for that is, as an investor, what puts pressure on pricing? Lack of supply. So, what a country rural town's got? Lots of land. Tougher to get uh, pressure on supply. Um, what do we got? Uh, no strategy to mitigate risk. Every portion of your investment career should have a strategy to mitigate the risk. Here. Waiting for a downturn in the market before you purchase. I'll give you a tip. If the property market moves at 8.7% per year on average, if I'm a betting man, that means I've got a better than not chance that the next time I buy, the market is going to. The next time I buy, the market is going to go up. Make sense? Uh, um, chasing the lowest interest rate option. Probably one of the biggest mistakes I find. Getting your structure right is so much more important than the low, lowest interest rate option. Remember, interest yep. is a deduction anyway. Um, not having the correct ownership structure or finance structure. Not allowing for all purchase costs. So, you know, stamps, um, mortgage registration, LMI, lenders mortgage insurance or mortgage insurance. Um, taking an approved finance limit as an unconditional commitment from the bank. Until you sign that document, which is buying that property, the bank's only dancing with you. There's no formal approval from the bank that they're committed to until they value that property, they have the contract, and they then say yes, the credit department ticks it off. It comes back to your finance clause. Guys, make sure you're including finance clauses. Yeah. And um, a big one, just to top it off, guys, um, selling property to fund lifestyle. Instead, create a redraw facility, and if you've earned it, the equity's there, hey, buy yourself some toys. All right, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day. Don't make that Sorry mistake. Sorry about the helicopter. <laughs> See you guys. That's a cop helicopter.